Okay, in this section, we're going to talk about inequalities. We're going to have a linear inequality that we're looking at, the quadratic inequalities, and rational inequalities. So three different types of inequalities. But before we get too started in all of this inequality talk, we kind of need to figure out what they are. So when I'm talking about an inequality, I'm talking about the less than or equal to and the greater than or equal to or the less than symbol and the greater than symbol. So that's what we're talking about in inequality means that there's more than one answer that we're looking for here. Now there's a couple things about inequalities that we need to go over before we get this party started. If it's less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, you're always writing your answer with an inequality in what's called interval notation. With interval notation, that's where you're using your parentheses and brackets. So if you have an or equal to symbol, you are using the bracket for interval notation. If you just have greater than or less than, you are going to be using parentheses. Also, if you have positive or negative infinity, you will also be using the parentheses at that point. The parentheses means up to, but not including, and the bracket means including. So make sure you're using those symbols um, with your interval notation. The open parentheses, um, basically we've evolved past the open dot, closed dot situation, so I want you to be using parentheses and brackets, not the open dot, closed dot. Interval notation is a direct translation because we'll be putting these on a number line. So let's say I have 3, so x is greater than 3. That means I'm going to shade to the right because I want the values that are greater, and because it's just a greater symbol, I'm going to be putting a parenthesis. So interval notation is a direct translation. So I have this as a parenthesis on the 3, comma, and notice I'm going to the right and I'm going on forever. So that's going to take us to infinity. So the interval notation for this problem is 3 to infinity with the parentheses around it. So it says everything in that interval is what is an answer to my problem. Okay, let's get started working some examples. Our first example is just going to be a nice, oops, that's example one, it's just going to be a nice little easy linear inequality. So I have negative 3x plus 5 is greater than negative 7. So just like you solve with a problem, you want to isolate the variable. So I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. You get negative 3x is greater than a negative 12. Now, remember with an inequality and you multiply or divide by a negative, what do you have to do? Flip that sign. So x is now less than a positive 4. Cool. Let's throw that bad boy on a number line. Now in my math lab, the number lines are going to be there for you. You just have to click your answer um, on your paper when you work these problems. You need to go ahead and write it out. Now whenever I make a graph, I just put the number I want, and a lot of times I'll put zero in there as a placeholder just so I know where I'm shading. So if I want the x values that are less than 4, am I going to shade to the right or to the left? To the left, to the left. Right on. So I am shading to the left because that's where all my x values are less than 4. Okay, parentheses or brackets? Good, parentheses because it's just a less than symbol. If it was or equal to, then we would use a bracket. Good, your final answer with interval notation always has to be, pardon me, your final answer with an inequality haha, always has to be an interval notation. So let's do it right now. Direct translation, I'm starting at negative infinity, and I'm going up to 4 with a parenthesis. Good, let's do more. Let's do this one's a little more to it, but not much. Still a nice little easy linear inequality. So 4 minus 3x is less than or equal to a 7 plus 2x. So this is the perfect reason why, when you have an inequality, it's been drilled into your head so much is to keep the coefficient of that x value positive. So you want to keep your coefficient positive, that way you don't have to worry about flipping the inequality or forgetting about that kind of stuff. Because remember, that negative sign is our nemesis. 
So I am going to add 3x to both sides. So I now have 4 is less than or equal to a 7 plus 5x. Subtract 7 from both sides, and I get a negative 3 is less than or equal to 5x. Divide both sides by 5, and x is less than or equal to a negative 3 fifths. Pardon me, x is greater than or equal to because the mouth is on the x, so that means that's what I want. Now, here's a situation where most people do not like to have the x on the right-hand side, so you can flip it. x can be greater than or equal to a negative 3 fifths as long as the mouth is on the x and the mouth stays on the x. That's what matters. Okay, let's throw this thing on a number line. Again, I just like to write my number in there and then put zero in so that I have an idea about where I'm going with this. I want the x values that are greater than negative 3 fifths, so am I shading to the right or to the left? Nice, to the right. Parentheses are brackets. Good, brackets, because it's an or equal to. Remember, if there's a line in your symbol, then there's a line in the interval notation symbols. Then, direct translation. You have a bracket with the negative 3 fifths, and that goes on forever, which is a parenthesis to infinity. So if I have that, remember, infinity always gets a parenthesis, regardless of whether or not your symbol is greater than or greater than or equal to. So you can have two different symbols in your answer. That's no big deal. Good. Let's do another one. Okay, this next one's called a compound inequality. And that's just because we get the opportunity to start with two inequality symbols. So how cool is that? Uh, pretty cool. So because we get to start with two inequality symbols, don't get worked up. We're just solving them at the same time. The ultimate goal when you solve anything is to get that x by itself. So because the x is here in the middle, I'm just going to get rid of all my business in the middle. If you subtract 5 from the inside, you have to subtract 5 from both of the outside ones as well. So it's basically just solving 2 at the same time. It's no big deal. Cool. Then we divide everything by 3. Now, think about this for just one second. A little side note here for you. If I had a negative 3 in the middle, what would you have to do? Flip those inequality symbols. Good. But because 3 is just plain, we're good. We don't have to worry about that. But I just wanted to check with you. So we're dividing by 3 right on. So I have a negative 3 thirds is less than x, which is less than 5. Cool. Let's put this guy on a number line. Now notice in this instance, I have two values that I'm looking at. I have a negative 7 thirds and a positive 5. Again, I like to put my little zero in there as a placeholder. It's in between those two somewhere. So if I just look at half of this problem, then I look at this and say, okay, negative 7 thirds is less than x. So from negative 7 thirds, x values that are greater than negative 7 thirds, I'm gonna shade to the right. When I look at this next problem, I have x is less than 5. So from 5, I want all the values where x is less than 5. And check it out. Where am I shading? In the middle. And look at my original problem right here. Where is x? In the middle. Cool. So what are the symbols that I am using for this problem? Good. Parentheses, because I just have less than on both of them. So in order to write interval notation, I stop. So I don't need an infinity here. I'm just going from a negative 7 thirds up to 5 and quitting. Good. So keep in mind, this is an inequality. Even though this looks like a coordinate point, that's why you have to make sure that you're using the right symbols and you know what your problem is that you're looking at. Good. Awesome.